Welcome to my lecture online. Our galaxy, just like our universe, is full of mysteries and surprises. And one surprise, which then turned into a mystery, was the velocity of the stars within our own galaxy. And let me explain a relationship to something we're more familiar with. Let's go to our own galaxy, where we have the Sun and the eight planets, the four inner planets and the four gas planets. And, according to laws of physics, we expect that the farther out you go, the slower the planet should be moving, because the orbital velocity equation, and I can put the equation down, is equal to the square root of g m divided by r. And so you can see r being the radius, the distance away from the center, as r gets bigger, since it's the denominator on the right side, it makes the velocity smaller. If you divide by a bigger number, you get a smaller number. And it also depends on the mass that's inside the radius of your orbit. Now notice that the vast majority of the mass in the, is in the Sun. We'd expect a nice logarithmic curve like this. As you go further out, the planets move slower and slower and slower. Mercury moves almost at 50 kilometers per second. The Earth moves at 30 kilometers per second. And every planet after that moves slower and slower as you go further out. We expect kind of a similar behavior with the stars in the galaxy. As you go further out, remember that the whole galaxy turns around. Our sun takes about 250 million years to take one trip around the galaxy. The stars that are further out, they take longer, and the stars that are closer, they take not as long. But you expect kind of a similar relationship. The farther out you go, well, the slower the star should be moving. Now, not all of the mass is located at the very center of the galaxy. As you go further out, there's more and more mass that is inside the galaxy, so you don't have that nice logarithmic curve. You expect to have a kind of a different curve. And also, as you go further out, then you, of course, end up in regions where there's no stars and regions where there are stars. Where there's no stars, there's no additional mass, so you, ex you expect that the stars will be moving slower. But then if you get back into spiral arm, you have more mass inside. So you have this kind of the wave action that you expect, that every time you hit a spiral arm, you expect some increase in the velocity because the added mass that you then contain within that spherical region. But instead of seeing a general downslope of the curve, you don't see that. You see kind of a flat curve, and at the end, when you get to the region where there's no more stars in that region, and you expect to go further and further out, and therefore the stars should be moving slower and slower and slower, you find out that it's not the case. They don't slow down, they stay pretty well even all the way through, even when you get beyond the confines of the visible part of the galaxy. And that is just an absolute amazement and an absolute mystery because that should not be happening. There's no way possible that that could be happening. And yet, we observe it. It is happening. So something is causing that to happen. And apparently, according to the laws of physics, there's only one answer to that. There must be some additional mass contained in the galaxy, perhaps within the region of the galaxy, within that spherical region, and perhaps beyond that spherical region, there must be some additional mass that we can't see. Wow. And we don't know what it is. So we have to go figure it out. And there could be all kinds of things. It could be maybe there's lots of neutron stars, there's lots of black holes, there's lots of dwarf stars, the brown dwarf stars, there's lots of interstellar material that doesn't light up, dark nebulas. Who knows what it might be? Maybe there's massive amounts of neutrinos that add additional mass to the galaxy that explains that strange behavior of the stars. So, we went to go look for it, and we tried to find it, and we tried to find it, and finally we came up with a potential solution. Is it a satisfying solution? Not by any means. But let me tell you what we went through to figure that out, and what ultimately the potential solution was, and why we thought it had to be that. But again, it's a big mystery. It should not have happened. Those stars should be slowing down way more than they are. So what's that missing mass? What's that mass that we don't can account for. The mass of the galaxy simply doesn't seem to be enough to account for the behavior of those stars. We have seen the perfectly nice behavior in the solar system exactly according to the laws of physics, and there it seems to be breaking the laws of physics. That should not be happening. And so, what was the solution? Well, stay tuned and we'll show you on the next video what we think the solution is to our mystery of the fast stars in the outer end of the galaxy. You're giving away the secret. They didn't hear me. They can't hear what I say. <laughs>
<laughs> so they'll have to go to the next video. So but what's the speed, the velocity? You mean the number itself? Yeah. Well, I mean, we can go calculate it, but you know, if you think about this, the sun is 28,000 light years away from the center, it takes 250 million years, so you have to convert light years to meters, and 250 million years into seconds, and there goes your speed. You want me to work it out? How fast our sun should be moving? Okay, well, um, then I also need to come up with the mass. Mass of? Well, I guess it could be done. The mass, the mass inside the orbit of the solar system. So by the time you get to that point, orbital velocity, well, let's try it out. Let's try it out. Okay, so it's equal to the square root of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, the mass. Well, where the sun is at, uh, 28,000 light years, I would say that's about three quarters the mass of the galaxy. Yeah, three, three quarters. So 0 0.75 times uh, 250 billion. 250 times 10 to the ninth, and then times the mass of the sun, 2 times 10 to the 30th. And then we divide the whole thing by the radius. So a light year is about close to about 9.6 trillion kilometers, 9.6 times 10 to the 12th kilometers, but we want meters, so that would be to the 15th, that's one light year, then we have to multiply that times 28,000, so there, that would be the velocity of the sun. So, g, universal gravitational constant, the mass inside, I would say about three quarters of the galaxy is inside the orbit of the sun, three quarters, times the number of solar masses in the galaxy times the mass of one sun. That's the number of light years, uh, one light year in meters, and there's 28,000 light years. All right, let's see what we can come up with. 6.67 e to the minus. minus square root, and the sun should be moving at hmm, about 300,000 meters per second. That's about 300 kilometers per second. So, based upon some rough calculations on the fly, the sun should be moving about, about 300 kilometers per second around the galaxy. That means every star is about in our galaxy. In our, in our galaxy. So, you're right. So, that would be the, based upon what we see, more or less, plus or minus, a little bit, about 300 kilometers per second. Mm -hmm. Not a bad observation.